Good afternoon and welcome to everybody that has been tuning in once again. Um, we are so excited for what God is busy doing. Thank you so much for the interest shown. And uh, yes, immediately I will be jumping straight into our great topic that we have been busy with for the couple of weeks now and um, the importance of prayer and uh, i think there's a whole lot of things that has been happening and uh, we've gone through quite a lot of things uh, concerning prayer so yes we're back again now i think i'm going to start off with the important one that um, we have received so many and i just want to thank the guys for responding and so many questions that came up um, uh, different ones that have been asking different questions concerning is prayer immediate is prayer now um, can i trust god uh, how does it work does that any other um, and there was two questions that i would love to answer today if one has to answer all the different questions that's been coming up it's going to take us forever and forever. So we're never going to come to the topic. So I, I think I'm just going to select out of all that uh, different people that has been asking different questions. There's two that I think is maybe important that I want to touch on. I think the one is how many a times must one mention your seed that um, has been given in prayer. Uh, for my personal viewpoint, um, I don't really think that when it comes to, to, to your seed being sown, my personal viewpoint, once again, is simple, that I think giving is a principle. Um, and uh, when it comes to prayer, the Father knows what you have need of. So you, you don't have to even mention your seed before the Father because the Father knows when you are busy sowing that you will reap. Let me just maybe give you something concerning that in the book of Matthew 7. The Bible declares from verse 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. Listen to what he say. Everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And he who knocks, it will be open. Now, that is, there is laws of God and principles that we have to follow. And one of the principles is principles of sowing and reaping. So the minute we sow, we've got to reap. That that the man soweth, that he will also reap. So I firmly believe in your, in your seed that you have been sown. God is familiar with that seed. I think the only thing that I know that the Bible reflects back on is we got to remind God of his promises. So just coming back to that question that has been asked, you've got to remind God about the promises that he made. You know, if, if a man sows, Yes, he will surely reap. So coming to that part of it, it's imperative for you to understand that that is one of the things that God will do for you. So uh, the amount of times mentioning about your seed, I don't think it's, it's, it's of importance in the sense of constantly reminding God of that seed. God knows what you have, what what you have sown. I think the principle of sowing and reaping is something completely different. So let me not even dwell a lot on that part of it. But you've got to remind God. Remind God of his promises. And you will see that God will definitely come through for you. I hope I'm answering your question concerning how many a times. I don't think it's necessary. I still think seed is part of a, a, a biblical command 
and um, uh, it's it's something to do with principles. That's my personal viewpoint. I think the second one that came up and the second question that came up was the question of my son is on substance and I've been praying. So um, I'm getting frustrated in the process because I think that this is taking way too long. Come, I explain something to you. Um, and I think this is where our topic is going to get quite interesting because we're going there right now. Is prayer sometimes being delayed or is prayer instantly? If is my asking instantly, can I ask God right now to perform a miracle? Yes, you can. Can God do it? Oh, yes, God can. Let us look at the book of Matthew. We're right in the book of Matthew, and I think I'm going to jump straight into it right now. Here in the book of, of, of Matthew, the Bible declares um, something very powerful. I think we're first going to go uh, to, to Matthew 9. Um, Jesus healing uh, a, a, blind, a blind man. Uh, when, uh, in, in Matthew 9 verse 27, and I think I'm going to take you there, when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him crying, there's, there's that word coming out again, crying out and saying, crying out and saying. So there was asking involved. They were crying out to him. They were asking him. That is, that is once again coming, coming direct to you. Listen to what they say. Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind man came to him and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Listen to what Jesus is saying. Do you believe that I am able to do this? When? When do you want me to do this? When did this blind man make their request known to God? Did they make their request known to God that very specific moment? Yes, but Jesus, if you, if you read here, there, there, there's something that, that's catching our attention. It's almost like they were crying out after Jesus. It must have happened in the street somewhere, crying out after Jesus. But the Bible said when Jesus went into the house, they followed after him. So in other words, they were persistent in that day that they want something out of the hand of Jesus. So even Jesus ignoring them in the process of time, getting into the house, he, he, don't tell me for a minute he did not hear what they're calling for. Of course Jesus heard them. Of course Jesus heard them crying out, shouting, screaming, saying, Oh Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. They ask for mercy. Um, anybody can plead for mercy. What type of mercy? Uh, this is specific. Yeah, crying out saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind man came to him and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. According to what? According to your faith. Listen to me. There is a, there is a thing here that we're going to touch on right now. Faith is imperative in my asking. It's no use I say I want something out of the hand of God. I want that miracle to be performed right now. But my faith levels has been tossed. My faith levels is all over. Um, uh, how, how urgent is this request that you are making on God? Is this request that you are making on God, is it you need a result right now? Of course, I want a result right now. So why don't you believe that Jesus can do it instantly? Listen to these two men. 
They made a request, have mercy on us. They didn't say what the condition is. They didn't say what the problem is. The Bible says Jesus touched their eyes. So he already knew even before they could say we are blind, Jesus already knew they want their sight. He knew they want their sight. He was aware they want their sight. They only cried out for mercy, but he knew what they were saying concerning that mercy that they are crying out for. So even before I ask, God knows what I have need of. That is imperative for us to understand. To fathom this thing out is simple. He knows the amount of hair on our heads. God knows us all together. He knows our very thoughts. Now, come on. If God knows your thoughts, what, is, what can be hidden from God? If he even knows your thoughts. Um, guys, this thing is becoming more serious. I feel, I feel somebody out there needs to make a, a clear demand on God that, Lord, I need this touch. I need this answer right now. I'm not going to let this answer be delayed. My faith is in this thing that I believe that you are able. Listen to these men. They said, we believe. When the minute when Jesus saw their faith in their belief, instantly, instantly Jesus, when he heard their faith in him, you, we know you can do it. Jesus then immediately touched their eyes and they received their sight. Listen to what Jesus said. Don't go tell this to everybody. Um, I wonder why was Jesus so deliberate by telling them not to go out there, and you can go read it further on, uh, where they, where, where after Jesus now opened their eyes, he said to them, please depart from here, but don't go tell nobody. But these guys, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't stop this thing. What they did is, they decided, my God, how can you tell us to keep quiet about this miracle that has transpired in our lives? We're going to go out there, and we're going to tell everybody about this God that can do it right now. Instantaneously, they didn't waste time, and they went out and they spread the, the, the news about the hand of God that instantly touched them. Another specific story in the same book of Matthew. Let's go there. Matthew 15. Let's look at verse 21. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region. What did she do again? Crying out. There comes again the crying. Oh God, listen to the heartbeat, what I'm saying to you. Prayer is simply asking. It's crying out to God. This people all had the same specific principle in asking in crying out to him and that's why i said this is imperative that we we we, we keep to this the bible say listen to this woman and behold this woman of canaan from the region cried out to him saying have what have what have mercy on what on me O lord son of david listen to her She's again pleading for mercy. She's asking for mercy. Then she said, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. So she, she's crying out, she's asking him, and she's telling him what the condition is. She said, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. Listen to me. This woman that we are recording right now, now this is where the shock wave is coming. This woman is not born again. This woman is not saved. This woman has a need. She's got a problem. She heard about this Jesus. She heard about what he can do. She cried out, listen to me. The things of God work so powerfully in our lives that we need to understand something. When you are desperate in your pursuit after God, and you cry out to the Father. The Lord will not turn his deaf or his ear uh, uh, on you. He will listen to your call. Um, 
I said last week when we, we touched on this, he makes the sun to shine over the righteous and the unrighteous. Um, he's a God that listens to our call and our cries, all of us. So when we call to God and God hear us and we call him for mercy, he will hear us. Whether you save or unsaved, it doesn't matter. I want to know what is your faith level telling you? What is faith in the inside of you? What and how urgent is that faith? That God, I need that miracle right now. I need you to come through right now. I need your anointing to fall right now. I need this thing that I've been battling with, this thing that I've been going through, uh, my, my process season after season, year after year. The same like this uh, lady that sent the request by saying, her son is on substance for so many years. She's been praying about it and she thinks it's taking a bit too long. You, you're desperate. Mommy, come, I tell you something. If you believe right now with me and your faith level is there, God will instantaneously deliver that boy right now from that drug addiction. It doesn't have to take years for you to call and wait on God and wait for the process of time. If faith is now, then act on now faith. If you want God to do it now, like this woman, listen to this woman. Like I said to you, she's not saved. She's not born again. Listen to what Jesus said to her. Listen to Jesus now. After she said, her daughter severely demon-possessed, but he answered her not a word. And the disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. Listen to, listen to the disciples. The disciples say, Jesus, send this woman away. This woman is a nuisance. She's making a noise. She's crying out after us. Um, this woman wants Jesus' attention. And she say, uh, the disciples even is irritated by this woman. So you can imagine the people surrounding Jesus is irritated by this woman's call, by a cry, by a plead. How many a times people get irritated with the same request that you bring before the Father every single time? People get irritated with you. But come, I tell you something. If you are desperate and you need God to do something right now, you don't care who say what. You go and pursue after this thing. You go and make your request known to God. You go and you, you push everybody aside and you say, I want an answer right now. I'm not going to settle unless I get my answer. So listen, listen to Jesus now. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now Jesus said, woman, I was not sent to you. I didn't come for you right now. I need to concentrate on my children, Israel. You are a born again. You are a child of God. Uh, you are chosen by God. Uh, God wants to listen to your call. He wants to give you your answer. Um, if only the children of God can, can grasp what I'm about to say right now. What Jesus basically say is, make a demand on me. Make a demand on me. The house of Israel needs to make a demand on God. You need to come out there. You need to tell God what you want from God. Now, the scripture goes further on. He said, then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. My God, this woman lays before God, prostrate. She cries out to him. She say, Lord, help me. This woman goes into worship. She goes into a different format. And she cries and she says, please help me. Listen to her. She's making a request on him. Help me, Lord. Now listen to what Jesus is doing here. He said, but he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to little dogs. My God, by that time I should have been despondent because this woman is persistent. Jesus is telling her, I can't give you the children's bread and I can't give it to dogs. In other words, directly Jesus is actually saying to a woman, you're a dog. That is what he actually is trying to tell her. 
But I love the persistence of somebody that is desperate, somebody that has faith, somebody that wants a now answer. I'm not going to leave here if I don't get my answer. How persistent are you? How, how more urgent can one become in your pursuit to God? If you want to prolong the, the, the agony, if you want to prolong uh, the frustrations that you are faced with year in, year out, year in, year out, then continue the way you continue. But if your faith comes to a level by you not accepting this, you want God to answer you right now, then is a now God. It all depends what your process is all about. I believe anything that I ask in the name of the Father, believing in faith, I will receive it. I can receive it right now. If I have faith for it, I can receive it right now. I believe that all things are possible for those who believe. So I'm a believer. I believe. I believe God can do it now. I believe God can instantly answer me. Uh, he owns the cattle on a thousand years. Come on. What else must I say to convince you the sun, the moon, the stars, the whole universe belongs to the Father? You have placed them in position. Do you want to tell me the Father don't know what you have need of? Do you want to tell me the Father don't know uh, what pain are you carrying? Do you want to tell me the Father don't know what frustrations you are faced with? Do you want to tell me that the Father is going to look at you and is just going to ignore you? No, I want to know how persistent are you? How desperate are you? How do you want it? And how urgent do you want it? Do you want it right now? Then it's going to happen right now for you. Listen to this woman. Now, after Jesus tells her you're a dog, she goes on and she, say, and she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which falls from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh woman, listen, listen to this. O oh woman, great is your faith. There's an explanation mark after that. In other words, Jesus cried out back to her. Listen to Jesus. Jesus was impressed with the faith level of this woman. Jesus is impressed with her persistence. Jesus is impressed that this woman's not going to take no for an answer. Jesus is impressed because she's telling him, she's telling Jesus this. She said, yes, even the little dogs eat the crumbs that falls from the master's table. In other words, God, if the dogs enjoy the crumbs, give me the crumbs. That is basically what she's saying. If I have to go down on my knees and lick it up like a dog, then I'm going to do that. My God, what a level of faith that must have been. I want to ask you to what extent and levels of faith would you go to to get your prayers answered? I'm talking about instantly. Oh, woman, great is your faith. Now listen to the second phase of that. Hear what Jesus is saying. Oh, woman, great is your faith. Now listen to Jesus. Let it be as you desire. Oh, my God. I, I've got to speak to somebody that's watching me right now. Let it be as you desire. What do you desire? What do you want God to do now for you? What is locked up right now? What is your request right now? If you have a request and you say, God, I want an answer right now. The Lord will do it right now. He'll do it instantly. God is not a man that he should lie. Will he speak a word and not perform it? That is scripture. That is biblical. That is what the word of God is saying. Listen to me. We don't serve a God that we have to go and offer up uh, first some rituals and stuff like that to get his attention and his answers. No, come on. Come on now. Come on now. Somebody out there, you've got to listen to me. No, that's not the kind of God that we serve. He's the one that wants us to come, to come into his presence, to come and ask him, desperately seeking after him. 
with everything that's within us and we got to make our request known unto him oh this great god awesome god is going to do something that is going to blow your mind i'm telling you right now i can feel the anointing of god because somebody out there somebody out there has already received the answer he's a god of now he's a god that can perform things now he's not someone that will delay things to make your agony worse and to make your situation worse and your problem worse oh no i don't want to serve a father that has the that, that has money um, he's got everything in his possession now i need to uh, i need to first try and impress him so that he can give me something come on now that's not the god that we serve that's what our God is, is saying to us. If you go back right in the book of Matthew here, and I think I, I, I read it to you now, the Bible say, uh, will a child go to his father and ask him for bread? Will he cast him a stone? No, definitely not. He gives him what he came for. He gives him what he's asking. He, then the scripture even goes further in that same uh, part. He say, if an evil father knows how to give good gifts to his children how much more your heavenly father come on when earthly fathers know how to do that i want to know will your heavenly father how much more will your heavenly father not give you what you want from him if your earthly father can go out of his way to do that for you how much more your heavenly father oh god somebody needs to come and just tell me and I, I think I think time is against us right now. Well, I, I've got to wrap this thing up. And I need to just tell you something. If you can go, he's going to give you the desires of your heart. The desires of your heart. This thing that you've been seeking for. So I've got to tell my sister, and I hope you are watching right now. If your faith is connected to God right now for a miracle, come I tell you something. Your son don't have to go to no rehab, don't have to go nowhere else. Come, I tell you something instantaneously with your faith in believing in this great God that I'm talking about. He's the God that instantly will deliver your son right now. Your son will get to a church. He'll run to a place. He'll, 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 he'll walk into somebody that will give him a word and instant deliverance will take place. That's the kind of God that I serve because God will send people your way to come and do it because he's God. Whatever you ask, believing, God will do it for you. Now, uh, time has really caught up with us and um, yes, you, you, it's just that this topic is becoming more and more interesting and uh, the more we speak about it, we can never get to everything that we have prepared. But anyway, let me, if you, if you have maybe just missed something, um, you can still catch us. Uh, you can still download this. You can still go in onto our webpage um, and even so on YouTube. So you can subscribe to the YouTube and you can still catch it live on YouTube. So please don't forget all the social media platforms that you can still follow up on please don't don't delay send me what you think about this send us your request if you want god to do something and you need somebody to pray with you and believe with you and stand in faith with you then we are ready to stand in faith with you and i think that is going to be something we're going to touch on next week that yes sometimes you need some people of faith to stand with you in agreement believing and trusting god for the supernatural in your life so oh yes that is the topic for next week and i thank god that you have watched and you were patient with us may the lord richly bless you as i say next week same place same time don't forget god bless you Hallelujah.